Once again, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Randy Rafi, and I'm the Director of Sales at Silex Software. I'll be presenting on seven ways to improve your SCOM deployment, leveraging MP Studio. Let's begin with a brief introduction to Silex Software. We're now in our 14th year of business. In the System Center space, we were one of the founding members of the System Center Alliance, in fact. And over this uh, 14 years, our solutions have grown from simple reporting solutions to full-blown, rich, advanced authoring solutions. And uh, more recently, we've introduced a compliance product called the HITRUST Pack. It's uh, capable of monitoring security compliance and HIPAA controls as well. It offers remediation for those controls as well. Our operations manager products include the free version of MP Author, a relatively new version of an authoring tool. This is MP Author Professional, and that contains advanced authoring capabilities. And then MP Studio. MP Studio has all the capabilities of MP Author Professional. CP Studio is a tool we offer to configuration manager users which is capable of authoring baselines to be consumed if you're using uh, SCCM and um, desired state monitoring. Silex Software also offers services helping our customers develop management packs or baselines for System Center. But we also offer services around OMS, Power BI, and Azure. Here's a sneak peek at some of our customers worldwide and users of MP Author. Over 6,000 users now, and you can see a really good sampling here. Uh, pretty much every industry across the board from finance, insurance, banking, oil, you name it, uh, retail. Um, lots of uh, awesome customers. Just an overview of MP Studio. I mentioned it includes MP Author Professional. This product is really good at documenting and helping you analyze your management packs. It's also equally good at override management. In fact, it's uh, more than 15 times faster creating overrides than doing it with native tools. MP Studio contains all the advanced authoring capabilities. It has a database backend, so that allows us to provide version control, change management, and auditing capabilities, as well as offering a central distribution point for all your management packs. With MP Studio, you can even see the running workflows, a report on all the rules, monitors, discoveries, as well as the overrides that are configured and running against any server on your SCOM environment. MP Studio also has a feature that allows you to test your management pack. So the idea is to test the management pack before you put it in production, thus determine if you've got noisy rules and monitors that require some override management in advance of deployment to prevent alert uh, storms. Okay, let's take a minute and to highlight the seven ways to improve SCOM deployment. So the first one on the list here, and these are actually not in a very specific order of importance, but it does allow me to give some flow throughout the presentation today. So the first one on my list is that it makes it easier to understand MP configuration. Using MP Studio, you can view the configuration of your management pack, see the override configuration, you can view a reference tree, you can document your management packs and spreadsheets and share that very easily with all the stakeholders in your, in your company. Whether it's management or perhaps you're providing services for a client, all that documentation, think of that as good, solid deliverables to share with your client the work that you're doing. In MP Studio, you can author your own management packs, and it's all wizard-driven authoring. We'll do a little bit of that so you just so you get an idea of those wizards, but 
how does this improve your SCOM deployment? Well, we have many customers who talk to us about having applications that don't come with management packs, for example, or perhaps you've got your own homegrown applications. In fact, some of our customers have hundreds or more applications that they've developed for internal purposes. So being able to author a management pack for your applications allows you to reduce the number of different monitoring tools in your environment. So it certainly helps improve your SCOM deployment. The third item on my list here is making changes offline. Now that's a challenge otherwise, but with MP Studio, we support the ability to work with, say, override management packs offline. You can create overrides, you can create knowledge, you can test those overrides, document, um, manage versions, generate audit history reports. All of that work can be done offline. Now, if you think about that for a minute, I'm, what I'm suggesting here is you can do these things without being connected to a management group. So to extend that a little bit further, that means you can delegate ownership of the management pack to the application specialist. So, for example, a SQL team could create their own override management pack or customize those overrides and uh, without actually having to touch a SCOM deployment. So you don't need to give them a role um, in SCOM even. You can just give them a copy of MP Studio and they can do all the things I'm going to share with you here today. So we'll pop back and forth to this slide briefly afterwards. So being able to customize overrides easily allows you to fine tune a management pack and how it works in your environment. So you're not stuck with just the default configuration of a sealed management pack. Because MP Studio makes it easy to create overrides and manage overrides, you can now tune those overrides so that it's optimized for your environment. Because your users are different, your hardware is different, you might have different service packs installed, etc. So every company really has a slightly different configuration for those overrides. In fact, you might disable um, a lot of rules or monitors that you believe are unnecessary in your environment. So really easy to do that in MP Studio. Okay, number five, managing versions and auditing change. This is something that's very difficult to do without MP Studio. MP Studio has a database backend, so you can add multiple versions, you can automate backup, you can check in manually MPs that you're authoring and be able to track the changes. MP Studio will do that for you seamlessly. It'll compare the new one that you add to the database to the previous copy and seamlessly build the audit history. So we'll go into that into the demo. I'll show you how MP Studio does that. Number six, validating your MPs before you're deploying. And uh, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times. Um, many organizations are in the situation where they don't have a reasonable method to test a management pack. And so they deploy it somewhat blindly into production. And I've heard stories of, of thousands, in fact, tens of thousands and more of false alerts being generated and having to deal with that in, uh, in production. So being able to test your management packs, I'll show you how you can use MP Studio to do that. Last but not least, um, automation. How can you do more with managing your management packs without actually having to touch them. Well, set up some automation. With MP Studio, you can automate the backup. You can automate the audit history. Once you're running the backup, MP Studio is creating that audit history in the background and you can automate a report and have that audit history distributed. You can run a group comparison and this will show you what management packs are out of out of uh, sync with the company standards. So keep that in mind as we go through the demo, the automation, I'll, I'll show um, bits and pieces of that. And um, 
we'll uh, we'll probably pop back to this slide afterwards just as a good reference. Apologize for the phone ring there in the background. Okay, so we're now going to switch to my MP Studio console. And let's see. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to turn that off. Okay, so um, I should mention I'm happy to do a one-on-one -on -one demo if you wish to see any of this stuff. Um, you know, just uh, in a little more detail than I'm able to show today. It would take several hours to show everything in MP Studio. Okay, so that phone is off. It won't interrupt us again. So here's the MP Studio console. And uh, just a little bit on what we're looking at here. In the top left-hand side, we've got the store database and management groups. I have two management groups registered. I'm just expanding my corporate environment. You can see all the management packs that are installed in here. Okay. And let's expand the store database. I'll tell you about the uh, three key folder types. Right at the top, we've got a backup folder. And so every time I run a backup, MP Studio will check each of these management groups, if any of these management packs, the unsealed management packs in that group have changed, we'll add the newest copy. And remember what I said earlier, the auditing is done seamlessly. And so right at this high level, we can see um, the latest copy of my Windows Server 2012 R2 monitoring MP went in here. This is the override MP. And there was one deletion and 10 changes as compared to the previous copy, 1004. Okay, so that's my backup folder, and um, let's take a look at the second folder type. This is the sealed folder, and if you add a sealed management pack, MP Studio will create a vendor folder name at the top level. So, for example, here's all my Microsoft MPs, and if I just scroll down here, for example, I can go in and find Windows Server... 2012 operating system monitoring and I've got three different versions of that management pack in my store database okay so that's the second folder type the third folder type is a project folder so I've got one with my name on it and this is where I would do things like work on an override management pack maybe I've got a health check exercise and so I'm tuning this override management pack on a continual basis, adding, deleting, customizing, further tuning overrides. And as I make changes, I put a copy into the store database so that I can maintain the audit history. So let's get into number one. How do we make it easier to understand MP configuration? Well, <clears throat> we do that in several ways. One of those is to provide something called a reference tree. To demonstrate that, I'm just going to go into my Microsoft folder, and let's come back down to <clears throat> the Windows Server 2012 Operating System Monitoring MP. I'll just right-click on that MP, and here you can see I can view the contents, view the reference tree, document, create overrides, I can initiate a comparison, I can deploy from here to any management group, I can test this management pack, I can add attachments, I could delete it, so on and so forth. So what we want to do is see the reference tree. So this is just a very simple way we help understand your management packs. So in the native tools, it can be a bit of a black box, in my opinion, and it's difficult to see the configuration of your various elements. Here's how you would just right click and you can copy this diagram and, and paste that into a document if you're creating something for a customer or for a manager. You can also right click on any node in here and access some of these additional features. Okay. And next, let's go in. I'm just going to double click on this to open it. <clears throat> Pardon me. So now we can see this middle panel called the MP Contents. I'm going to hide the Properties View Edit dialog box. And now we can select things such as monitors. And we can see now I've got 49 monitors. The default view would be more like this. <clears throat> However, I've already pinned the display name column and the target column to be on the left so that when I scroll to the right, those columns are stationary. 
in terms of making it easier to understand your configuration. Sure, all the data is in here. If I keep scrolling to the right, you can see all the um, details of this management pack. But to make it easier to work with these monitors, you can further customize this by grouping, for example, by target, or maybe grouping by target and the enabled status. Okay, you can do things like use a filter and say, I only want to see my performance health monitors. So lots of flexibility here. You can even create a custom grouping to say, let's show only the monitors that contain the word percentage. Okay, so it's very easy <clears throat> to customize these views and I typically will group by target. Once I've got this set up the way I want to have it, I can just now choose to use this as my new default. Okay, so a little bit more on MP Studio and customizing all the groups. We can, let me just reset this last field. Okay, so <clears throat> once you've got the table customized the way you want it, you can then go in and document that. First, let's take a look at rules, and perhaps we'll document these. I'll drag the target back in here. Let's group by enabled status. Now, if I want to document just these rules, I can hit the export to Excel toolbar button, and what that does is documents the current view. So I'm only going to see the rules in this spreadsheet. Okay, so here's all my rules. It's also grouped by the enabled status. And let's come back in, we'll save those changes. So the export to Excel, remember, documents the current table. All right. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to, this management pack we're looking at right now is the store-based copy. I'm going to switch to the one, the same management pack that I've opened up, but this one is from the corporate domain. So let me just grab my highlighter, I'll point out here, across the tab, top tab, you can see the path where this management pack is. So this one's in my Silac corporate management group. Okay, I'm just going to erase those drawings. And I see there's a question, and I, I don't normally get into the questions until the end, but no, you cannot edit a sealed MP. Um, once, you, once you unseal it, it's basically you need to have that company certificate in order to reseal it. If it's your own MP that you've authored, then yes, you could. So. Okay, so back to what we're looking at here. These are the overrides in my production environment. And there's several things I want to focus on while we're here. But um, let's finish up a little bit on item one, making it easier to understand. Here's the entire configuration of all the overrides for this particular management pack. And I might customize this by dragging context up. And typically, I'll drag parent up. And there might be several ways you want to customize this view. I'm just trying to give you a couple of ideas. So context, parent, parameter, or property. And if I want to document this, again, export to Excel. Now I've got a nice, neat, tidy document showing all my overrides. It'll have grouping by context and parent, just like we saw in the console. Okay, so MP Studio makes documentation very easy. There's several other types of documents I want to show you here, or at least a couple. And um, in order to do that, I will actually, um, let's switch back to my other management pack. This one is in the store database. So all you need to do is right click on the management pack name and choose document. So you could create an HTML document, you could create a workbook, and I'm also going to show you, you can, you can schedule this documentation as well. So this is a part of the automation. Remember bullet number seven here was automating and how that 
can help improve your SCOM deployment. Well, it's doing work for you. You don't actually have to do anything. You set this up and uh, you can have this report published to a folder or you can set up email subscription. Okay, so you can have that report delivered to a distribution list, to your manager, to all the stakeholders. If you're a um, systems integrator, you might want to set this up to send a copy of the report to your customer. Okay, so let's see what that report would look like. I previously generated one for us to look at. This is um, known as the full report. And it just takes a couple of minutes for me to generate this report when I do it over the VPN. So I've got one ready here for us to look at. And um, I'm just going to bring this back to the summary. So here's the first tab. You can see multiple tabs across the bottom, one for each element. We're looking at the summary, showing the references, version number, et cetera, is in here. If I select the rules tab, now we can see the 97 rules. And you may already be wondering what those blue rows are. Those are the overrides that have been created, and they reference the element directly above. So row 5 is an override that's been created for row 4. Okay, Going across to the next tab at the bottom, these are my monitors. And I've got 49 monitors. Again, the blue represents overrides that have been created for the element above. So you can start to imagine how this clarifies the configuration of the management pack. There's a lot of information in here. You'll find even GUIDs in here. You know, you can remove that from the spreadsheet, but some people actually want to see that data in here. Okay, now I'm just going to scroll a little farther over. We've got tasks, views, module types. Here's my 456 overridable parameters. And the next tab shows the overrides. Of course, you could look at those with the rules or monitors that they reference, but here's the overrides on their own and the entire configuration for those. There's my context column. So it's got the same stuff we saw in the console view. There's my value column, the parent, next over is a parameter or property. I'm just going to scroll all the way to the right. And I'll point out the last column name is referencing MP name. And while I talk about this, feel free to glance down there and see the different referencing MP names. This report is for a single sealed MP. And by looking at this last column, I can see we've got overrides stored in multiple locations. So you can see already this simple document has helped me understand that I've got a problem here in my management group. I've got overrides stored in multiple override MPs for a single sealed management pack. In fact, it looks like one, two, three, four, at least five different override MPs for a single sealed MP. So being able to understand the configuration includes where my referencing overrides are stored. So we've got a problem. We've got overrides stored in multiple locations. I'm going to come back to that when we start discussing item three. Okay, so when it comes to item one, that uh, concludes the things I wanted to cover. Simply being able to see the configuration of a management pack and its overrides, it's really easy. You can set up automation and have this document sent to any of the stakeholders. If you want the most clear, concise report, right-click on the management pack and generate that full report. Okay, so right-click, document, to Excel workbook. Okay. All right. So the second bullet we want to cover here, back to our PowerPoint, is authoring your own management packs. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time authoring here, but I do just want to point out, you know, how easy that is in MP Studio to get started. So we're going to just scroll up here, and we'll start at my project folder. If I just right-click on that project folder. There's an option here to create a new management pack. And so this will launch the wizard to create management packs. Okay, so the fact that it's a wizard makes it really easy. I'm just going to come up with another name here. And 
nothing too fancy. Click next. And this is going to be stored in the store database. That means I'm going to automatically track the versions. I'm automatically going to create an audit history. Okay, we're going to be able to go in, we're doing this offline, we're going to be able to go in and test that MP after we're done authoring it. Okay, so for sake of this demo, I'm just going to create an empty management pack, but you could walk through this wizard and create a management pack for a single server application or a distributed application. Okay, so this could, a distributed application could have, for example, a backend database, a middle tier service layer, and then a client front end. Okay, so let's continue with this. So we've got our blank uh, manifest or empty management pack. And so <clears throat> let's now find that in the store database. So we've already got a single version of that management pack in there. So that's my initial version. And I'm going to do, let's go into monitors, right click. So here are my options for creating monitors. Let's just quickly create something like an event monitor, something relatively simple. I could browse out to that application. So we've got our homegrown application. I browse out to that server. And then I can start to build my event monitor. So prior to doing this, we would already have created our discovery and target. I'm just going to stick with something relatively simple here in terms of um, what we create. We're going to create an event monitor. Now, because I'm browsing to that specific server, we would have the various logs available to us that exist on that server. I'll just stick with the application log. And now I can build an expression. I could, uh, let's go with an event ID that equals I just pick something randomly and for my second property I could pick an event ID as well or um, perhaps a, a user or event parameter we'll stick with an event source and several options in here but we'll stick with equals and then from the drop down let's pick the event source to be the bonjour service select next so everything is wizard driven in fact we're defaulting the target here but if you had authored one previously as a part of creating this management pack you may want to pick that instead okay so now we can specify a healthy timer or event so in this I'll stick with the uh, healthy timer however you could specify a second event expression to resell reset the health state. Okay, so now you can see we've populated the name, so we're actually developing a naming convention for you. You could edit that if you wanted to shorten it up. Select next. Now we can, in this particular dialog box, we can set our run as credentials. I'll just use the default. We can modify the health state, but you can start to see how we're making it very easy by defaulting a lot of this information. We're now going to set this to generate alert for this monitor. We defaulted the name, the source, uh, description. You can go in and further modify this if you want to add some more information. Select next. So very easy to create and author within MP Studio. Now, let me point out quickly in the upper right corner, just below where I'm highlighting, you can see the version number and there's an asterisk here. That asterisk indicates I haven't saved this management pack yet. So I need to make sure that I do that um, before. In fact, if I go to close that, it's going to prompt me and tell me um, the um, it's going to prompt me and tell me that I need to save that. So let's go ahead and do that. In a normal situation, you'd probably author a bunch of rules and monitors before you save it, but I want to end up with multiple copies in the store database. Now, by clicking Save, it's adding another copy into the store database. So this dialog box that popped up is a preview of the audit history. We've incremented the version number, okay? The previous one was version zero. There are six additions and one change. And we can see the details down below. We're getting who made the change, time of the change, and the details of that change. Here's my event monitor we've added. I could add in some comments over here. 
um, who requested the change, um, a work order number, etc. Hit save, and that um, folder now, Randy Demo 123, will have a second copy added to it. Okay, so we've now got two versions of this management pack in there. Um, perhaps while we're here, I'll just point out the bottom four are advanced authoring capabilities only available in MP Studio. Likewise, creating a new process monitor is an advanced authoring capability. Let's take a look at rules. All the SNMP stuff, those are advanced authoring capabilities available in professional and in MP Studio. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on authoring. I just want to point out that you've got this nice, tight, clean integration with the store database. I'm managing my versions in here. That allows me to do things like be able to create that audit history. And notice anytime you run audit history, you can schedule that. It's the same scheduling options we saw earlier. Now, there won't be a lot in this audit history. I'll bring it up briefly because we're here. So there's not really a lot in there. But we'll take a look at another audit history report later. Lots of things you could do in here just to finish up on authoring. Once I've got this management pack completed, I could do things like, you know, create that reference tree. I could document this management pack. I might want to compare it to one that's in production. I can actually test it, and I would recommend testing it before deploying it. But once you're ready to deploy it, you could deploy it right from here to any management group that you've registered in MP Studio. Okay. So next, let's move on to bullet number three. And we're going to do bullet three and four simultaneously. Um, with respect to bullet three, making changes offline first. This, as mentioned, allows you to delegate ownership to other application specialists, for example, or security group. They've got some training on operations manager. They understand overrides and why you need them, but you don't necessarily want to give them full access um, with the Ops Manager console into your SCOM environment. You could give them a copy of MP Studio and access to that store database, and they can work offline. So let me demonstrate in a couple of different ways what that means. We already did authoring that management pack. I could run a test. This would be considered offline because this management pack resides in the store database. Okay. I'm actually just going to close that management pack. And let me point out as well, remember the tab up here shows you where this management pack came from. This copy is from the store database, okay? And um, that means any changes we do here, it, they're offline. And what type of changes am I talking about? It would be things like working with overrides, okay? So um, for example, rules, I can just pick any one of these rules and choose to manage overrides. This will display a table showing all the properties available for that individual rule that we picked. Okay, so um, we see one has already been created for the enabled status. Okay, and I'm just going to click priority and severity. And so I could come in here and modify those values if I want to. Okay. Click on OK. Notice the destination management pack. That's my override management pack in my sandbox folder. That's my project folder in the store database. So we've just modified that override management pack. And this dialog box comes up again saying, OK, we've incremented the version. There are two additions and one change. Tracking who made the change and when the change was made. Okay, so that's building my audit history. We're going to look at that later. I could add some comments in here, work order number, or whatever we want. So those, these overrides we just created were for a single element. All right, let's try this. I'm going to drag the enable column down here again. Let's group by target. 
And this time I'm going to take the network adapter, and there are eight, so let's pick five of those, right click, and this time when I choose manage overrides, it's going to look at those five rules and display only the common properties. Okay, so it happens to be the enabled status is the only one common. So what we're doing here is we're actually creating overrides in bulk for all five of those rules we've selected. This is the only one that's common. So we're going to change this value to true. We're actually going to do five edits here simultaneously. So here's my changes. Click yes. Incrementing the version, that's my override management pack where we're storing those overrides. One addition and three changes. Here's my previous and new values. I could add comments. So that's one example of bulk override management. Next, I just want to come in here. Let's do this. Okay, so we brought back all the monitors. There's 49 of them. I'm going to group by target. And let's do a bulk override operation here because monitors typically have a lot more properties available. So I've picked 10 of those 12. This time we'll choose manage overrides. And of course there are more properties available. There's five of them. So let's check each one of these five. They could already exist, but we're going to now customize this a little bit. Just making some random changes here. Okay, so this could potentially result in five times 10, so it could be potentially 50 edits here. Go ahead and click OK. Here's a preview. Go ahead and commit those changes. Now we've got that preview of the audit history, incrementing the version number. There are a total of 43 changes, so we did almost 50. And we can see the previous and new value for all of these. In terms of audit history, who made the change, when the change was made, and details are contained in path and name. Save those changes. Okay, so we've done quite a bit of work now. I've demonstrated creating overrides for a single element. We've done bulk override management. We've put copies into the store database. All of this work has been done offline. So it's impossible to, you know, start generating a bunch of alerts in my production environment. Okay. The next thing I'd like to do is we've got two more types of override edits I want to share with you, things you can do to help improve your SCOM deployment. We've created some overrides from the sealed management pack. Now we're going to go in and we're actually going to open that management pack that we've been working on. Here it is here. We can see every time we make a change, there's the latest copy with 43 changes. So I'm going to double click on that to open that override management pack. And we're now looking at that override management pack. I'm just going to create a little bit of real estate here. And let's pick our overrides. Just group by context, another way to look at it. I could document this using the export to Excel. However, I could also just right click, document the audit history, click the pin to move that column over to the end, scroll to the right, we can see the configuration. I can bring back this properties view edit and now randomly I'm just going to make a couple of changes here to show you how easy it is to edit your override management pack. So in the right hand side, anything that's bold in there, you could modify. So you can modify the override name, maybe that's too long. You can change the value from warning to whatever you want. You could change the enforce value from false to true. So I can edit here. Notice now we've got that asterisk again. Um, if I saved that MP, it would make a comparison to the previous copy. I'm going to do a couple more edits first. 
So another option for editing is just simply right click in the table and choose to edit the override. And then I can use that drop down box and change that value from low to high. Another option is I could do a bulk delete. So I'm just going to randomly pick a few of those and let's delete those. Okay, and one final change, if you really want to, you can go in and look at the XML and make some edits in here. Um, I tend to keep it to very basic edits <laughs> when I'm in XML. Click OK. So we've made several changes. If I hit Save MP, it will now check it into the store database increment. There's four deletions, three changes, okay? We've seen that dialog box a bunch of times now. So that time we're working with it. One more thing I'd like to show you in here, and that's knowledge authoring. Um, you can create and edit knowledge. You do not need Visual Studio or Office in order to do that. So authoring knowledge is very easy in MP Studio. We should save that as well. save okay so we've done quite a few edits there's one more type of edit I'd like to share with you before we finish up on overrides and move on to managing versions and auditing so <clears throat> if you recall in the spreadsheet I had mentioned about scrolling all the way to the right looking at this referencing MP name okay so everything we're looking at here is also available in the console so if you suspect you've got override stored in multiple locations you can use MP studio to find out or confirm if you've got override stored in many different override MPs so let's find here is my corporate MP that we had open previously we're looking at the referencing overrides we had group by context and parent I'm just going to reset that. And as we did with the spreadsheet, if I scroll all the way to the right, now I suspect I've got override stored in many different locations. Here's how I would confirm it. Take that last column heading, drag it up, and here at a single glance, I can show you I've got override stored in all of these management packs. So I've got 91 of them in my good override MP. I've got 26 in an OR Windows MP. And then I've got even more, 459 in a third one. I've got at least one override in the Select Empty Management Pack, and then Microsoft ships with some. So we've got overrides all over the place. It's a mess. It's impossible to manage properly. But with MP Studio, you can improve your SCOM deployment by tracking down these misplaced overrides and cleaning it up. How do you do that? You take a copy of all of these MPs, Okay, and you create a folder in the store database. I've got one called cleaning up the mess. So we're taking this project offline and we're going to clean it up offline. Once we do that, we'll deploy those management packs back out to production. Okay, I see we do have some questions. I'm not ignoring you. We will attempt to come back and answer those at the end of the session. Okay, I just want to make sure I get all the content delivered here. We're starting to run low on time, but I I'm sure we can get everything completed. So <clears throat> here's my cleaning up the mess folder. I've got multiple MPs in there that contain overrides for my Windows Server 2012 monitoring MP. Let's try this. I'm going to go into the folder good OR Windows Server 2012. I'm going to open the most recent copy. And we can see in here, if I select overrides, We've got a total of 97 overrides in there. Now I'm just going to group by context. And I see here we've got um, four overrides with the context net log on for Windows. These in fact are supposed to be in the Active Directory override MP. Okay, which is why I have a copy of that MP also in the cleaning up the mess folder. You can see the version number of it is 1006. The version number of the MP I've got open is 100.41. We're going to take these four overrides, right click, 
and we're going to move those overrides into the Active Directory MP, the one they belong in. So it's bringing up a list of places I could drop it. I could put these directly into production. I find that a little bit too risky. You could accidentally drop them on the wrong MP. So that's why I've got this folder here, cleaning up the mess. Here's my Active Directory MP where I want those four overrides to go. I'm going to hit OK. <clears throat> so here's that dialog box. It's changing my destination MP, so we're incrementing the version. We're adding those four overrides to it. We're changing the version number. You could add some comments, hit save. We're also modifying the source MP. This time they're deletions though. Okay, so we're incrementing the version, four changes, hit save, and that's that. Now, how do we deploy those out to production? I would recommend, well, there's, pardon me, two ways. I can right click and just simply deploy. Okay, that's an ad hoc method. I'd wanna test this, I'd document it as well first but I would recommend doing that test first, okay? Another way to do it would be to right click and choose to compare your management groups. You can schedule this report, it's the same scheduling options we saw earlier. Now there is quite an overlap in these seven bullets. What we've done here so far is we did some work offline, we cleaned up some overrides and we keep putting copies in the stored database. So we're going to talk about item five in a minute and we're going to validate an MP. But what we're doing now is we're still managing change. We're managing versions. And by doing this group compare, we can see the versions of management packs in each management group being compared to the stored database. So let me explain this another way. This middle column, this is the version of all management packs in the store database. The next column over is my lab management group and the versions of each management pack in there. And the next column over is my production management group. And so we can see the version of each management group and each management pack in there compared to the store version of that same management pack. So let me show you how I would manage the deployment from here. First thing I might do is group by sealed. And we, we did a, a project to clean up overrides, right? And we know the path was a folder called cleaning up the mess. So here's that folder. We modified two MPs. We modified the good OR and we modified the active directory. And so if you look at the store column, you see the version of those MPs are both greater than the version in production. So if I hit deploy for this Active Directory override MP, I can actually remediate this discrepancy or mismatch in versions. In fact, it's going to deploy to the lab all the referenced MPs as well because they haven't been installed there yet. Okay, and here's the override MP being deployed to my corporate management group. So you could deploy by hitting yes here. I'm not going to do that. I'll probably get in, in trouble with the team here if I started deploying management packs out into production. But that's the group compare report. We've got eight minutes to wrap up. I want to talk a little bit more about managing versions and audits. And we've really been managing versions all along. When we authored an MP, we stored the new version in the stored database. Okay. When we created overrides in bulk, we stored those changes in the store database. When we cleaned up the mess, we we're working in the store database. So the entire audit history has been stored in that database all along. So just to point out, we're talking about managing versions because we're putting them in the store database. That has allowed us to seamlessly build the audit history. Okay, now, we're going to wrap in, uh, weave in some of the automation here because the audit history can be automated. So the store database contains all of my management packs. I could run an audit history report right from here. Not recommending that, but you may perhaps want to set up audit history. These are my two backup folders containing all my override MPs 
that are in the store database. And I've previously gone into here, uh, right clicking on my management group route and set up a scheduled backup. So this is going to happen on a nightly basis. It's going to publish a report to this folder and I can set up the email subscription for that. But bottom line is we've set up automated backups. Now I can right click in the backup folder and schedule the audit history report publish it to a folder, set up an email so I can send it to my boss to show him what a great job we're doing backing up all the MPs. And from this audit history report, I could even share that with the change management committee to show them all the changes that we're working on. Okay, so clear, concise documentation is going to get you a support from your change management committee. Let's take a look at that audit history. So here we have it. Remember, we've got that export to Excel if we want an ad hoc report, but you're probably going to set up that schedule. Um, because I'm looking at several management packs, I might group by management pack, then I might group by change by, so I can see who's made changes. I'm the only guy, but you know, many of you will have multiple admins working on authoring MPs or working on override MPs. It makes it very easy to find your changes in here. Okay, so that's one example of an audit history report. I'm actually going to now go down and look at the one that we've been working on in my sandbox folder. We did some bulk override management on this MP. So let's just right click here. We could schedule it. Let's go right to the view. Again, my preference is to group by who made the changes. You, you may want to group by the time a change was made. Okay, and now I can more easily go in here and look at specific changes. Scroll on to the right. I don't have anything in the comment field, but you could, you know, be putting something very specific in a comment field to, you know, group by work order number, for example. Okay, changes that required by Sylvain. Okay, so lots of flexibility there. You can run that audit history on an ad hoc basis or you can schedule that. You don't even have to be sitting at the console because when you run that scheduling, you enter in your password here, you can close the MP Studio console, walk away and work on other things and you're going to be getting your backup, you're going to be getting your audit history. Remember, you can schedule a report of a management pack and have that sent out to all the stakeholders as well. Okay, so that's it on the audit history. Just aware of the time, we've got a few minutes left. So uh, we've covered overrides, we've covered managing versions audit history. We've talked a lot about this automation, so we're done with that. The last feature I have to share with you and the last way to improve your SCOM deployment, and I've talked about it, is to test your management packs before you put them into production. And as unbelievable as it may sound, the worst case scenario I've heard of is a large financial institution in Europe running a VMware management pack had a million plus alerts and brought SCOM to its knees. So uh, hopefully that hasn't happened to anybody on the call here, but Certainly having situations where thousands of alerts are generated is very common. Okay, so how do we test a management pack? First thing I'll point out is I recommend running a baseline test. What does that mean? Well, perhaps you have a health check to do or you're preparing to deploy a new management pack, but you don't have an override management pack yet for it. Do a baseline test first before you start customizing, okay? That baseline becomes a reference. You run a test for an hour. Then you start creating your overrides or making your changes if you're authoring a management pack. Baseline test first, add your new rules and monitors or, or what have you, creating overrides, and run a second test. So now you can compare in order to determine did you improve or you know, do you need to further customize? So I selected the test results workspace. I just want to share with you, here you can see I've done several tests of various management packs. 
okay? And so we will eventually take a look at one of these, this one in particular. It generated 11 alerts on the 19th of October. Before we do that, I'd like to show you the test wizard so you can see how this actually works. We're down to two minutes. Okay, so here is the store version of the management pack. Right click, choose to test. And the wizard has just a few simple steps. Specify one or more servers to run your test against. Okay, specify local administrator, an account with local administrator permissions. Just like running Perfmon, Event Viewer, Registry Editor remotely, you need to have local administrator privileges in order to do that. Set the duration of your test, whether or not you want to delay it, and the sample rate for collecting Perfmon counters and event log data. And that's it. Your test is set up. If I kick this off, it would start to do several things, including recreate the health model, connect to that server, and then it would start uh, confirming permissions and collecting data. We're looking at a historical test here. And since this test was done, I've updated this report library. So that's what that message is all about. It's still recreating the health model. We can see the resultant set of alerts in the background. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. First, let me show you the data that was collected. So we have several tabs, counter summary, event log, discovery. Okay, so back to counter summary. When the test is done, it calculates minimum, maximum values. That data can be useful to help you configure your management pack thresholds, for example. We can right click on one or more counters and chart that. If this was running live, you would see it update just like a Perfmon window. Put your mouse over those horizontal lines, see maximum value, blue or standard deviation, green is the average. Um, solid vertical lines, those are events that occurred during the test. Dotted vertical lines are alerts that occurred during the test. Okay, so lots of value in this test. There's my events. If you've authored your management pack, you may want to look at the discovery and just review the properties collected for each of your targets, for example. And now let's take a look at the resultants of alerts. This is the bread and butter. If you group by name, group these alerts, you can very quickly tell the 20-80 rule I talked about, 20% of the elements will generate 80% of your alerts. Well, disk read latency generated eight. Okay, and you can select that alert. Down below, you'll see the knowledge base article. There's an alert components here where you can just simply click on that link and it will find the MP and open it that was used for the test. It'll find the element that generated the alert and it will also show you the overrides that exist for that particular monitor. So there it is, average lo logical disk, and it's now just opening the property. So we can, right from here, modify the overrides for that particular element. Okay, so we're two minutes over. And I'm just going to switch back to this slide for a minute. And uh, let's review this. You know, number one, make it easier to understand your MP configuration, share documentation, customize views in the console. Optimize your environment by creating management packs for your homegrown applications or systems that don't have a management pack. Work offline, create overrides, and test offline before you deploy it into production. Creating overrides, do bulk override management. It might be as simple as disabling everything for a given target. Use MP Studio's database to manage your versions and seamlessly build that audit history. Validate your MPs before you deploy them. Find those noisy rules, monitors, create overrides. And last but not least, even when you're not sitting down at MP Studio, set up the automation so you've always got your backup and you can have key reports generated and sent to management. There's that override dialog box. So I could customize that. Notice the threshold was set to zero in order to force alerts. 
Okay, that concludes today's session. I'm now going to stop the recording.